Hi, this is Bert de Vries, and this is the Bayesian Machine Learning and Information Processing class. Today we're going to be talking about dynamic models. Dynamic models is, a, in general, a very big topic. With uh, You can buy uh, really uh, big books about it, uh, with many algorithms. Uh, we are going to be talking, of course, about the Bayesian approach. Um, and you'll see that if you take that approach and you combine that with uh, message passing for inference, that many algorithms can be derived or kind of emerge from the framework. So um, we don't have to remember a lot of extra tricks um, to deal with dynamic models. We just need to be pretty consequent about our approach, which we've already learned in the previous lessons. Let's um, consider a problem. I have uh, a card here, so this is a moving card, and you can move the card by uh, um, applying a force. We call that force U of T. You can also break with U of T by making it negative. Uh, the card has a state, and the state consists of a position, Z of T, Z of T here, and a velocity, Z dot. And that state is not observed. Um, the top equation here is, is basically how, z, how the state evolves um, under, the, uh, under the application of the force. Um, my position depends, of course, on where I come from, on my previous position at t minus 1. It also depends on the velocity that I had at t minus 1. Then uh, I apply a force and that will change both the position and the velocity. And everything that we cannot capture with this specific model, there may be other forces at play that uh, we didn't model, we're going to capture here with a noise term. Now we also assume that this state, the position and the velocity of the card, are not uh, observed. Rather, we observe some function of the uh, state and we make it simple. Um, that function that we observe is just we add a little bit of observation noise. So we assume we have a noisy uh, sensor. So these, this set is called uh, basically the equations of motion. Um, we call it a, a state space model and we'll deal with that or we'll go into uh, later into the exact definition of a state space model. Um, but you can also just see this as a model with observed variables x of t and unobserved latent variables z and uh, z dot. And uh, there may be some parameters, in this case uh, sigma z and uh, sigma x. And maybe something in this matrix may also contain some parameters. Not in this case, but generally, of course, this may be a parameterized matrix and this one as well for that matter. Um, so, in a sense, it's just, again, um, a probabilistic model with uh, observed variables and unobserved variables. And uh, our plan is, or our task, is to infer the position z of t after 10 time steps. So, you apply some random forces or maybe some, some pre-specified sequence of forces. Um, and you observe x of t, and I want to know after 10 time steps, what is the best estimate of z of t, the position? And we're going to work this out in this class. So generally here we're concerned with sequences, uh, x1, x2 to, through x capital T, and now the order matters, right? So uh, I'm going to introduce a shorthand notation for this sequence. I'm going to introduce uh, x sub t and super capital T means the sequence from xt, xt plus 1 until x capital T. And we're going to drop the subscript if the subscript happens 1 to be 1. So x super capital T is the same as this, is the same as this sequence. Just um, as a shorthand notation. And we're interested in building just a generative model for that explains this time series, right? So this is P of X1, X2, X3 until XT, capital T. Now note that the order matters here, or we assume that the order matters. This is not, we, what we cannot do is, 
and this we, what we have done this in the past is we're going to break this into the product of the probabilities for the individual observations but we cannot do that because this is not the same sequence as when I would uh, exchange x2 with x1. The order matters here. So I can't break it apart. But in general, I can use the product rule in a certain way, something that's called the chain rule. You can break out, let's say, the last observed observation, x of the whole sequence is the probability for the last observation given the whole sequence before that times the probability of the previous sequence and now we can do the same thing on this guy on the probability for this previous sequence so that's the last observation of that sequence given the previous sequence and so forth if i keep doing it i get this product px1 times px2 given x1 times px3 given x2 given x1 and so forth um, that's uh, always true um, but this is not usually the form that we want to build a model because x of t here is a function of everything I've seen in the past so if I just have streaming data my model will grow 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 and uh, we don't want that so generally we'll just say x of t depends on some limited number of uh, past observations for instance if you do that and if you would assume gaussian noise and a linear dependency you get something that's called an autoregressive model in the kth order autoregressive model we say x of t so we're going to now fill in this submodel here all right this is the same we're going to say x of t depends in the following way on on the past observation it's a gaussian distribution over x of t uh, and it depends on the, the only the last capital k samples linear combination and whatever i cannot model with this i'm just going to capture with the noise term this is a auto regressive model um, for us this is basically a likelihood function right um, now I can continue and uh, set priors over the a of k or the sigma k uh, come up with some set of observations train a of k sigma k and use this model to make predictions or use it in any other way and that's all perfectly fine um, there's nothing wrong with that AR models are used all the time um, so that's uh, one, uh, let's say, threat of research that I could have done here in this class. But in the interest of time, we're going to move on to a bit more general model, which is called the state space models. And the state space model is sort of an extension with latent variables. So you can get some, uh, it's, it's a bit more flexible. So the general state space model looks like this i have added now for each observation x of t i've added a latent variable z of t think of that as this is going to be the uh, sort of the analog of the gaussian mixture model where for each observation i had a, a class label uh, and this is in the same way i can assign here to each observation uh, a class label or a cluster label um, and if we do that basically we talk about a hidden Markov model uh, but cluster label can also be uh, continuously valued and then we have a general uh, dynamical system and uh, there's a particular form of let's say the joint distribution over obser observed variables and latent variables uh, there's a particular form that's very common and this is called the state space model uh, it consists of multiplication basically of two sub models one is state transitions given the previous state what is the probability for the next state so how do i move on in over in time and given my current state how does it generate the current observation so the memory here is basically in the state transition. And uh, so this is a very general model. You can also rewrite autoregressive models in this way. And uh, 
lots of other models. You have uh, ARMA models, right? Autoregressive moving average uh, models. You can also write them in this way. So it's a very general way. There are many, um, many uh, models can be written in this way. We can also draw a Fournier style factor graph for this model. Um, here on top you see how basically the states progress over time. I have a prior for state one, then I move on through probability of state two given state one. This is my transition probability, it gives me state two and I can keep going on this chain until generating here z of t. And for each state I can uh, go down here with uh, a data generating distribution for x at, at 1 and x2 and so forth. I need an equality node because z of t is, uh, is happens to be uh, basically appear twice in the state transitions. One going uh, basically going forward, one in the, here and one here. Uh, and also in the observations. So we need this equality node, but uh, it's not hard to see that this is actually nothing but a visual representation of this factorization. It's, it is, however, a very insightful factorization, particularly when we go to inference. Now, given this factorization, so now we have a factorization and we have a visualization of a state space model. Um, we generally need to assign, of course, um, specific instances of probability distributions to the state transitions and to the likelihoods or to the data generating distributions. And you can use anything there that, uh, that you want. You can use um, categorical distributions and Gaussians and whatever you want. It's all legal, it's all valid. Um, generally, if, you, if Z is, de is defined on a discrete alphabet, so it's really, let's say, a, a class label, a cluster label, then we talk about hidden Markov models. And when it's on a continuous alphabet, we took a, a, a continuous alphabet, um, there isn't, we, we call it an, uh, a dynamical system, although an, um, a hidden Markov model is also a dynamical system. So there isn't uh, a specific name for it. But the most common case is when Z of t is assumed to be drawn from a Gaussian, and then we say, okay, this is a Gaussian dynamical system. So uh, these are two very big classes, the, the hidden Markov model on a discrete alphabet and the Gaussian dynamical system, where the state, basically the state transition, uh, state is on a real alphabet and your state transition matrix is a Gaussian. So, but you can use any other distribution if you want, and then um, we can do Let's say that we have, uh, we can also draw now, we can extend this, for instance, I can, uh, let's say that this data generating distribution may have some parameters. Well, then I just draw an, an edge out of here with the parameter and I can put a, a node here uh, with the prior on that, all right? So there's all kinds of ways to extend this to include more latent variables, but we keep it simple for now. I assume I have a model and I've trained the model. So now I want to do something with it. And in, uh, let's say, in Sigma processing, there are three tasks very common. One is called filtering, state estimation. The idea is to estimate this, the hidden state, so Z of T, based on the past, I'll change this uh, to past and not past, based on the past and current observations. So everything up till now, let's say I'm interested. So here's this, this graph again, and I'm interested basically in uh, the belief for this variable here, Z of T. So I, I can pull this tree by this variable up and then look at 
how does it all hang down and you start at the terminals but what are the terminals of that tree this is a terminal this is a terminal this is a terminal this is a terminal and it just keep passing messages from the terminals towards my variable of interest so from x of t up 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 and take this message and then so this outgoing message kind of integrates all the information that was in this graph and so this outgoing message is really uh, the probability for z of t given observations x1 through t um, so by just passing these messages you basically do filtering now it gets interesting if you want to do recursive filtering if you want to say at time t um, I'm not going to pass messages all the way from the beginning to the end but at time at any part at any point in time I want to just get the state of the previous or the estimation of the state of the previous time step and only and combine that with um, with the most recent information um, it's it's basically a triviality in this factor graph concept but uh, if you want to work it out in equations which we'll do below it's very hard to do so um, but what you will do is um, okay at, after you observe the first observation you execute message one two three and four and then you just wait and you wait and you get a new observation and you will not start now passing messages one two three you'll just take message four which is my state from let's say the, the posterior state of the last after the last time step so i pass now four five six seven eight and then i wait and get a new observation i pass message eight to the future and i will do the messages 9 10 11 and 12 and so forth uh, so uh, we don't have to repeat every time all of the previous messages uh, um, it's a triviality in uh, to do this recursively uh, at least when you do it with message passing there's another operation that we use uh, is, is interesting and you can actually get more information about z2 um, if you also can take into account maybe observations from the future right I mean uh, at, I'm going here now and generally estimation of state based on both past and future observation is called smoothing but say we're interested in the posterior for z2 and I may use all the observations from the past x1 in this case from the current x2 but also everything that i happen to have observed in the future which could be x3 x4 x5 all the way till x capital t well in message passing uh, it's it's easy right from this viewpoint if i look to the left and the right i just see trees so from the past i just pass from the terminals from x1 and from px1 I pass messages pass messages until I get this incoming message forward message on this edge uh, called it mu forward z2 and what information do I get from the current well basically x2 passes a message up 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 and I combine that with messages from the future and basically I get these backward arrows the, the green arrows but they just messages from the future also of course from here and up 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 leading to this message coming from the current and future observations and if i want to know what is my posterior for z2 given x given observations one to capital t which may lie in the future but i assume i've uh, i've observed them uh, i just need to multiply these two messages we've done that in the factor graph class so smoothing, I mean, uh, you can go to signal processing books uh, and find all kinds of difficult algorithms. But in a message passing context on a factor graph, it's, it's, it's just very visual. It's really nothing special. Now, what is prediction? Uh, let's say I make T observations. I have observed X1, X2 and through XT and I'm interested in a prediction 
p of x t plus 1 given the observations x1 through t well uh, what do i do I, I need to come up with uh, this forward message here i just pass these messages from left to right from left to right left to right and then i come up with this message here going down this is not yet observed so there is no black uh, node here it's just it's just a prediction mu forward for z t plus 1 here is really the probability for z t plus 1 given the past given all the past observations so whether you do prediction or smoothing or filtering whatever you do in the end all you do is you just look at the variable that you're interested in and you pass messages from the terminals of the graph towards that edge and that solves your problem now a very famous algorithm is basically Kalman filtering Kalman filtering we've done it a few times uh, is basically this filtering problem coming up in a recursive way of updating your state based on the based on some the, let's say the previous state information about your previous state and the current observation uh, these red messages basically implement Kalman filtering. Uh, so in a factor graph, it's nothing special, but it's a very important algorithm. So we are going uh, through it a bit. So let's assume I have a, a linear Gaussian dynamical system and assume for now that it's um, uh, scalar. So I have a state transition. Uh, so z of t is defined on the reals and uh, um, z of t, I'm going to assume, is a linear function of, uh, of, uh, of its past state with some Gaussian noise. In other words, a first order autoregressive model. And x of t, my observation, is also uh, a, linear a linear function of z of t plus observation noise. This is a state space model. And it's linear. All the uh, there's no um, let's say the, the the state transition is is a linear function of the previous state, and also the uh, x of t is a linear function of z of t, and uh, and everything is Gaussian here. So um, if I multiply these two and I multiply that over time, I get a big joint distribution, and it's still a Gaussian. And that also means that every inference problem now that I want to know, whether it's hidden states or hidden, um, you know, for every hidden state that I want to do, or whether I want to make prediction, it's always going to be a Gaussian because it's just going to be a probability of something, some variables in my Gaussian, given some other variables in my Gaussian. Um, and so you can actually compute that. There is a specific uh, task uh, how to infer z of t given all the observations up till the current from a previous estimate p of z t minus 1 uh, and, and all the observations at, until t minus 1 and a new observation right and like i said you you know it's going to be gaussian it's just it's just going to be applic application of some gaussian manipulation rules and i've actually done that in this class here uh, and it's quite quite a work to do this but i'll tell you and you can check that in other books on control theory or signal processing uh, when they derive common filters it's not going to be shorter than this this is the whole derivation of a common filter uh, but usually it takes a couple of pages. pages. The, uh, the Bayesian formulation actually is very, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say this is elegant, but um, it, uh, I think it's still elegant compared to uh, some other derivations. Um, so in the end, what comes out if you do this derivation, and this is of course a derivation of a common filtering that I'm not going to ask you to rederive on an exam. Um, I would. I do want to ask you to go through this derivation and see if you can reconstruct for yourself all the steps that we take here. I think it's important that you understand how the common filter is derived uh, without, let's say, taking the extra step uh, and
exam that is reproducing this or some variant of this on the exam. Um, but what comes out is that um, in order to uh, get go from the um, the previous mean mu of t minus one and the previous estimate variance about the the, the state. Um, uh, I'm talking about the state z of t, so uh, uh, prediction mu of t minus 1 and sigma square of t minus 1. In order to get to mu of t and sigma t squared and incorporating the most recent observation, these equations lead to, and um, you will recognize that, well, mu of t is a something based on the basically a prior prediction plus some weighting of the prediction error. And uh, that weighing factor is what's called the Kalman gain, and it's some ratio of, of variances. Um, now, there is an, a multidimensional format of this. These are the, let's say, the, the multidimensional Kalman filtering equations. They're very famous. Um, these equations uh, made it possible to calculate um, uh, basically how to fly to the moon and uh, not miss the moon. Um, so these uh, equations are important. Um, so we get, now we have implemented these equations in, a, in our code example. We go back to the card example. So we want to uh, basically we had this, this card and uh, we want to estimate after 10 time steps the position z of t. So we coded that up, we have derived, let's say that you have derived this Kalman filter and uh, you can code it up and here's your code and what you'll see in your code here is that we implement the Kalman gain here, this is k of t and here you see the m of z is the, uh, the prior prediction plus some gain times a prediction error. So basically you see here really the these are the Kalman filtering equations. And what we get at time t is based on the previous state. Uh, I make a prediction that the card will be in my prediction for the position is given by the red belief. Right? So around position 41.89. So the mean is here, the top of the red one, and this is my uncertainty. There's uncertainty because I have a sensor noise and I have also account for a state noise, basically a process noise. And uh, then I make a measurement. It's a noisy measurement. It's the blue curve. So this is my measurement. And of course, in the Kalman filter, in the end, you're going to have to fuse these two. So uh, you're going to end up with something in the middle and the corrected prediction, um, the prior prediction and uh, incorporation of the uh, the likelihood leads to the green one and this is so your posterior prediction and that's 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 good I mean so this worked very nicely um, you can do the same thing by message passing uh, but now you do not have to derive this you do not have to have to actually derive by hand the posterior or the whole basically the whole Kalman filter um, what you now do is you just plug in your generative model. So we, when we do it by message passing, we use Formulab and we plug in our model here. We say um, basically here the state transition model, right? Uh, Z is of A times CT minus 1 plus B times the, uh, the forces uh, plus noise. And this is my observation um, equation, right? Uh, it's basically a Gaussian with uh, Z plus a little, little bit of noise. You get your graph. Um, for that graph, we say uh, create a sum product algorithm. And then I just go through T and I say step. Basically step through my... Uh, my uh, my sum product algorithm, and that will give you exactly the same graph and the same predictions. And that's interesting because we didn't have to derive the Kalman filter now, but it's doing Kalman filtering. 
it's doing exactly what we do here in here basically filtering it just does it in a recursive way it just uses the at time t it doesn't start at t is one it uses the state the forward message from the previous time step so when i make observation two i reuse i get an incoming message message five then i pass six seven eight and i'm done and that's what uh, formula will do and then i wait for my new observation and i pass eight nine ten and 11 if you will and uh, that's it um, so you can see that quite difficult algorithms um, sort of emerge in a natural way here by looking at these models as factor graphs as basically probabilist factorized probab probabilistic models you can draw the graph it's very insightful and whatever you need to infer well just pass messages towards that variable on the edges and in that sense there isn't really anything new um, the only thing you need to do is you cannot make use of this um, this independence assumption this you cannot make use of that but if you if you just don't do that and you just write the model that you do assume so you will have state transitions and so they are not independent in this graph then there isn't anything uh, different from from what you've done before it's sort of the same thing as before um, and that's the main message of this class that's why i don't want to make it even a very big class because there isn't really anything new here it's just applying the same methods uh, now on uh, onto dynamic models okay so as before please read the lecture notes uh, and come to class with your uh, questions see you there bye